True wireless earbuds are a dime a dozen. You can find copy and paste releases all over Amazon and AliExpress. A few months ago, Linsoul partnered with Peacock Audio to release the Peacock Flight, a true wireless earbud designed for audiophiles, and that was a Kickstarter campaign. But Moondrop also released their own true wireless earbud. They call it the Neko Cake, or Nico Cake, or just call it Jim. Back in November 2021, Shenzhen Audio asked if I wanted to review the Nico Cake. Intrigued, I said yes. For the past two months, I've put this wireless earbud through its paces. By the way, Shenzhen Audio and I have a continuing relationship. They send me gear from time to time to review. Shenzhen Audio has a large library of audiophile gear, from DACs to amps to headphones to IEMs. If you're in the market for audiophile stuff, take a look at Shenzhen Audio. The Nico Cake is $43. What can this product do that is different from others? Moondrop says that the Nico Cake, aka Jim, has Bluetooth 5.0 and supports SBC and AAC protocols. This means you will get native Bluetooth support on Apple devices, but on everything else, you'll get only SBC. Mmm, how tasty. Moondrop claims that the driver in this earbud has a titanium-plated dome which offers more treble detail than an ordinary large dynamic driver. They say that the Nico Cake will provide rapid transient response and enhanced details. This earbud has active noise cancellation. There's no information about how much external noise can be cancelled. The Nico Cake has a companion application called Moondrop Link. This is available for both iOS and Android. The Nico Cake has touch controls. You can modify or change these control layouts in the app. The app also allows you to select among five DSP tuning options. Moondrop says that they dedicated research and development into the sound and performance of this device. They say this results in, quote, authentic timbre and an open, natural listening experience. And while it's not really an audiophile feature, Moondrop uses its own voice prompt, not the voice prompt from your iOS or Android device. Moondrop calls it the Mitsu Kiyuki warm voice. Mitsu Kiyuki. Mitsu Kiyuki. Got it. I'll tell you about Mitsu Kiyuki right now. It's brilliant. I love it. It's not only a refreshing change from the automaton voices from our smart devices, it actually has a little bit of character. I love that Moondrop actually thought about this small detail. It's a welcome, wonderful addition. Overall, you get a ton of features for $43. This is an amazing amount of technology and features packed into a device. Let's all hope that it works. The Nico Cake, or known as Jim, is fashioned after the Apple AirPod. It's a stick design. If you hate the AirPod looks, then the Nico Cake might not be all that different. The Nico Cake has a soft white color scheme. It matches the color of the charging case. Both the earbud and the charging case appear to be made of similar or very same type of plastic. It's sturdy enough, smooth, and not shiny. It is leagues better than the hollow plastic housings we have seen with true wireless earbuds in this price range. On the other hand, the plastic is still plastic. Dropping either the charging case or the earbuds will result in chipping or other damage. The Nico Cake has two touch control areas, near the top of the stems on either side. The touch areas, strangely, do not have volume controls. The Link app does not offer volume adjustment as one of the custom options. So, you must control volume directly from your source device. This is, I think, a little bit of an odd oversight. I've personally never used a wireless headphone or earbud that did not have a volume option available on the device itself. But, I also personally hate using volume controls on the device I'm wearing. I always use the source to control volume. So, maybe I am the target audience for this non-feature. Their charging case has USB-C connection. Moondrop says in the manual that you should refrain from opening and closing the case too often. They don't say why, but I suspect the reason is the hinge. It's probably not going to take too much abuse. The Nico Cake comes with a few spare silicone ear tips. You also get a short USB cable. These accessories are perfectly agreeable. There's nothing flashy or unique about them, but they're also not a hot mess like what Blonde throws into their packaging. As for comfort, I found the Nico Cake easy to wear for long periods. There is minimal pressure in my ears. The earbuds sit securely. Even with rigorous head shaking, I can't dislodge them. I can wear these earbuds for about three hours before needing a break. 
Overall, the construction is perfectly fine. I think you should be careful with how you toss this product around, but casual daily use should not pose a problem. The accessories are, as I said, agreeable. The Nico cake is rather comfortable, at least for me. To test the Nico cake, I used it with my MacBook Pro and iPhone. Since the Nico cake has only AAC and SBC, I wanted to try its features using the highest resolution of Bluetooth codec available. I also listened with ANC off. I used the stock accessories. I listened to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD. All of my initial tests were done using the stock tuning. The Nico cake, surprisingly, gets fairly loud. I never had to resort to above 80% volume. The Nico cake appears to have a bass roll off. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, there's a rumble from the beginning. This is supposed to be obvious. The Nico cake was just barely able to present that rumble, even at maximum volume. Transients was very fast, as fast as what I think I've heard on planar magnetic headphones. Separation between sub bass and mid bass was audible. When the crescendo hit, the organ cut through the other instruments. The rolling thunder effect was present, but seemed a little distant. There was clear separation among the group sets. When the vocals chimed in, they rose from the background until they were just ahead of the instruments. In Conquer by Overwork, there's a rolling marble effect at the beginning. This is supposed to pan from right to left to center. The Nico Cake did easily render the sound of rolling marbles and the panning. There are multiple drums in this track, and this earbud presented all of them. Each drum strike was slightly blunted, as if a portion of the energy was absorbed by a thin sheet in front of the speaker. There was minimal melding between each drum strike. I listened to several hip-hop songs including Pure Water, New Patek, Reel It In, and Uproar. With each track, the Nico Cake made the sub-bass sound underemphasized. The subwoofer sounded like it was at the other end of a large room. The drums were louder, of course. The vocals were easily two steps ahead of the instruments. I listened to my Sicario soundtrack. I use these songs to determine if there is any audible bass distortion. Traversing from low to high volumes, the Nico Cake never distorted. Overall, it appears that the Nico Cake has a sub-bass roll-off, and I think this is pretty obvious. Compared to the neutral Moondrop Quarks, the sub-bass on the Nico Cake sounds almost distant. Mid-bass is closer to neutral, but does also have a slight de-emphasis. Transients is rather quick. The Nico Gym appears to have close to neutral mids. In Orla Gartland's song, Why Am I Like This?, there's natural vocal grain and cymbals mixed in. The Nico Cake did not emphasize either. Both details were present, but not pushed forward. This was similar to what I heard on the Moondrop Quarks. Orla's voice was one to two steps ahead of the instruments. The drums and guitar had minimal melding. In Want You Back by Haim, the Nico Cake did not emphasize the sibilance in the primary singer's voice. It was similar to what I heard on the Quarks. At eight seconds into this track, the singer says the word, we, and drags it out, making a sound gravelly. The Nico Cake made this detail come through without difficulty. There are two backup vocalists, one in either channel. The earbud let both voices appear separately, even when the instruments played at maximum. There is minimal melding among the drums, piano, guitar, and bass. In Superposition by Young the Giant, the Nico Cake presented the ukulele, drums, and bass clearly. The ukulele was noticeably louder than the bass. The primary male vocalist was about two steps ahead of the instruments. His sibilance was not emphasized. There's a backup vocalist in this song, and his voice is layered beneath the primaries. Most headphones and IEMs cannot present this detail. The Nico Cake could not either. Between 1 minute and 10 and 1 minute and 20 seconds, there are sharp intakes of breaths. The Nico Cake presented this detail easily. Overall, the Nico Cake seems to have close to neutral rendition of mids. There is very little bass bleed into the mids. Vocals are generally ahead of instruments. There is at least average clarity in this region, if not slightly above average. The Nico Cake appears to have a mid-treble dip and an upper treble roll-off. In Skirtso for X-Wings, the Nico Cake presented the brass and horns clearly. They sounded pushed back, distant, however. They were, in other words, not particularly close to the ears. Their higher-pitched notes were not emphasized. It appeared that there might be a slight reduction somewhere in the mid-treble region. The Moondrop Quarks, for example, appeared to have brighter presentation of these same instruments. There was good separation of various group sets. The Nico Cake, however, did not present verticality, depth, or width. The Timpani was somewhat audible, but I think still pressed into the background because of that bass roll-off that I mentioned previously. In Flat from the City, the Nico Cake made the piano sound like it was about 8 feet away. 
Its bassy notes were underemphasized compared to the more neutral quarks. There was minimal melding from one note to the next. I could hear the electric buzzing and pops and sizzles, though these details were slightly muffled. The cello sounded smooth and only marginally melded with the piano. I heard the creaking of wood on the pianist's bench and the shifting of the cello's weight. However, both of these details sounded just slightly muffled compared to the quarks. In Take 5 by the Dave Brubeck Quartet, the Nico Cake presented the piano in the right, drums in the left, saxophone center, and the bass a few steps behind. All instruments were clear and had little melding among them. The saxophone sounded distant and its notes were not the same as what I heard on the quarks. In fact, the quarks presented the saxophone closer to the ears and with more emphasis in the mid-treble notes. The Nico Cake made the saxophone sound much further away from my ears and did not have as much energy in those same notes. The cymbals are struck at different positions, which should result in varied tonalities. The Nico Cake did present this variation. Overall, the Nico Cake has a dip in the mid-treble and likely a roll-off near the top end. Treble instruments sounded a bit distant away from the ears. There is at least average clarity and separation in this region. Moondrop says that the Nico Cake excels at detail retrieval. In my experience, I don't think this earbud is any sort of detail monster, but it did mostly render with clarity. You can attribute some of the clarity to the bass roll-off. However, sometimes the earbud made obvious details sound a little bit muffled, as if there was a thin sheet in front of the speaker absorbing the energy. Sharp intakes of breaths, twangs of guitar strings, multiple vocalists, varied tonalities of cymbal strikes, pops and sizzles, electric buzzing, creaking of wood, shifting of a cello's weight, all of these details were audible. I have a quantitative test for detail retrieval. I use Kazuki's song, New Light, which has layers of details. This includes the sound of wind, rustling of grass, children playing, synth, piano, and footsteps. I count the number of footsteps I can hear in the first 60 seconds. The Heidi's MS2 presents 8 to 9 footsteps. The Tin Hi-Fi T2 and the T2 Evo present 7 to 8. The Moondrop Aria presents 7. The T2 Plus and the Blonde BL05 present 6 to 7 each. The The Audio Legacy 2 provides 6 to 7. The Moondrop Starfield, the Peacock Flight, presented 6 footsteps. The Moondrop Quarks provides 5 to 6. The BL03 from Blonde presents 5 to 6. And the Nico Cake presents 6 to 7 footsteps. For my detail resolution scale, I use the Moondrop Aria and the Starfield as the average performers. Any IEM that provides more or less footsteps is judged accordingly. Thus, on my scale, the BL03 would be considered below average, and the T2 would be above average. Using this scale, I think the Nico Cake presents above average detail retrieval. How you wear your headphones and IEMs along with the ear pads and ear tips affects soundstage. So, a foam ear tip will close off soundstage more than a silicone ear tip, generally speaking. Perforated ear pads will render a bit wider soundstage than solid ear pads. Your original recording will have a huge role to play as well, so keep all of this in mind. As far as the Neko Cake is concerned, after repeated tests, it seems to me that this earbud has about average soundstage. This earbud does not have depth, width, or verticality. In other words, instruments don't seem closer or further into the wings, closer or further in depth as in an orchestral arrangement, and sounds never come from above or below. As with my detail test, my soundstage test also has a scale. For the sake of comparison, let's talk about soundstage of other IEMs. The Tin Hi-Fi T2 and the Heidi's MS2 have above average soundstage. The Blonde BL03 and the 05S are average at best, and perhaps slightly below average in soundstage based on proper fit. The Starfield, Aria, Quarks, and Peacock Flight are about average. It appears that the Nico Cake has soundstage that is comparable to that of the Aria, Quarks, and the Peacock Flight. We will talk about the DSP options later. Right now, we need to figure out what the basic sound signature of the Nico Cake is. From what I can tell, and I'm just guessing here, the signature is an attempt at neutral, but falls short. The bass is noticeably rolled off. Sub-bass is de-emphasized. Mid-bass is closer to neutral. However, it always seemed that drum impacts never sounded as loud as with my neutral testing IEM, the Moondrop Quarks. The Nico Cake does have good bass clarity and fast transients. The mids are fairly neutral. Vocals are always one to two steps ahead of instruments. There is minimal melding among mid-centric elements. There is hardly any noticeable bass bleed into the mids. The Nico Cake 
does not accentuate sibilance or vocal grain, at least not that I could hear. The treble appears to have a mid-treble reduction. This reduction seems to extend into the upper treble. Treble instruments sound further away from the ears than what I heard with the quarks. There's good separation among treble instruments. The Nico Cake has above average detail and clarity and about average soundstage. Overall, I don't think this is a neutral sounding earbud. The bass and treble roll off are specific choices. I would say that the stock tuning is more vocal centric, aiming for clarity and detail. But the Nico Cake is also not an analytical product. The best I can say is that it sits somewhere between analytical and neutral, at least with the basic tuning. Whether you might like this type of sound is something I cannot answer. The Nico Cake has five DSP tunings. This includes the following. Balanced. This is the default tuning of the Nico Cake. It supposedly follows the VDSF target response. Mood Drop Classic. Supposedly has airy treble and softer, cleaner mid bass. Dynamic. Surging heavy bass with intense forward vocals and is best for beat-heavy pop music. Moondrop coyly says that this is a copy of the tuning from, quote, a B-initial earphone brand in Germany. Is that bare dynamic? No bass. This rolls off treble over 10 kilohertz without loss of bass. This is supposed to cater to poorly made recordings, or really harsh ones. The Wenne Bostel. This is a copy of, quote, a well-known S-initial earphone brand in Germany. Is that Sennheiser? Anyway, Moondrop says that this tuning reduces the treble above 10 kHz and has punchy bass. If nothing else, I somewhat appreciate Moondrop providing as much detail as they have, which isn't a whole lot. This is refreshing change from the typical word salad we see from other manufacturers. Let's briefly discuss what I heard while testing these various DSP profiles. I used my test playlist and connected to my Apple devices so that I was getting the highest resolution Bluetooth possible. The Moondrop Classic tuning appears significantly to decrease mid-bass. It seems like the levels are crushed, the volume is much lower than from the stock balanced setting. Something similar happens to the mids. They sound more muffled, more unclear compared to the balanced setting. And again, with treble, the classic setting does a similar alteration. This particular tuning tends to noticeably reduce clarity, separation, and detail. The dynamic setting reduces sub-bass, but marginally emphasizes mid-bass compared to the stock tuning. The mids are pushed forward with the dynamic setting. Vocals stand out more. There is greater separation and clarity in the mids region compared to the stock tuning. Mid-treble seems to get slightly elevated compared to the balanced tuning. There is a bit more separation and clarity to the dynamic setting. The no bass tuning makes bass sound more muffled compared to the stock tuning. Sub bass is a bit more reduced, mid bass sounds less clear, and bass instruments seem like some of their energy is missing when compared to the stock setting. There was a noticeable difference in the mids. The no bass tuning seems to muffle the mids compared to the stock tuning. Vocals are pushed a step back and are less clear in a mix. Treble, however, seems marginally clearer with the no bass tuning. There's a slight elevation in the mid to upper treble region compared to the stock tuning. The Wenne Bostel setting materially emphasizes bass. Both sub bass and mid bass are louder compared to the stock tuning, and there's less separation of sub bass from mid bass. The mids are clearer on the stock tuning. The Wenne Bostel pushes vocals closer to the ears and emphasizes sibilance and vocal grain by a few decibels. There is more bass bleed into the mids on the Wenne Bostel setting. The treble is pushed closer to the ears on the Winnebostel tuning. This setting also appears to slightly emphasize mid-treble compared to the stock tuning. There is more clarity and separation on the stock tuning. Overall, the dynamic setting presented the greatest amount of clarity and separation of all of these five DSP options. The no bass reduces or muffles bass but slightly elevates treble. When a Bostel significantly emphasizes bass and slightly exaggerates treble. The classic setting just makes everything sound a bit more muffled and quieter. Let's briefly talk about the Moondrop Link app as well. It's bare bones. You have to reconnect your device to the app every time you launch it. Your earbuds won't immediately appear. The custom touch options lets you change the touch button features, but these are hard-coded, so you only get to make a few changes. 
Some things you can select to activate on one or the other earbud. Others, you get to choose the type of press, short or long, or the number of presses. And that's it. You don't get to assign different functions or gestures. Further, the menu system still has Chinese characters, and it shows whoever wrote the app did a poor job making sure all the elements were translated to English. You can also select among the various DSP tunings, just as we talked about. But for some strange reason, this app will ask you to confirm a setting every single time. This security feature, I think, is a little unnecessary. Still, the audible change is immediate. The earbuds do not have to restart, and there's no pausing of the music. You can close the app after selecting a new DSP tuning, because it'll just get activated on the earbuds. Finally, the user manual is available to read through the app. Overall, the app is simple. It's nice to have some control over the device, but this is clearly far short of what I would consider class-leading application design. But for less than 50 bucks, the app does give you a lot more than other Bluetooth headphones above this price range. Let's also quickly talk about the ANC. You get either ANC on or off. There's no transparency mode. Does ANC work? Eh, technically. It's not particularly good. There's a marginal reduction in some external noise, but it's nowhere close to the ANC function on the AirPods Pro. Instead, the Nico Cake relies more on the passive noise isolation through the seal of the ear tips. I like to conduct comparisons of products so that you have a fair approximation of where new products sit. Unfortunately, I simply could not set up a consistent A-B test for the Nico Cake. There was far too much fiddling to connect and reconnect among the various Bluetooth earbuds and too much time passed among swapping gear that it was a fruitless endeavor. But I was able to get a general idea of the differences. So I'll briefly highlight the obvious differences between the Nico Cake, the Apple AirPods Pro, and the Peacock Flight. I put the Nico Cake into its stock tuning for these comparisons. The AirPods Pro have a greater mid-bass emphasis than the Nico Cake. The Nico Cake has slightly greater clarity in the bass region. There's more bass bleed into the mids on the AirPods. Vocals are more intimate on the AirPods. Separation of mid-centric elements is generally more obvious on the Nico Cake. The AirPods have a treble emphasis and less clarity in the treble region. The two devices seem to have similar detail retrieval and soundstage. The Flight has similar sub-bass rendition to the Nico Cake. The Flight has slightly harder mid-bass impact and marginally greater clarity in the bass region. Vocals are generally a little clearer on the Nico Cake, but the Flight has a bit more intimate rendition of vocals. There's a little bit more bass bleed into the mids on the Flight. The treble is also clearer and closer to neutral on the Flight. The Flight has about as much detail and soundstage as the Nico Cake. I know this won't give you more than a vague idea of the differences. What I can emphasize is that all three products sound different from each other. The Nico Cake is not the cheaper version of the Flight, and even with its DSP options, the Nico Cake won't mimic the sound signature of the AirPods Pro. Bluetooth earbuds seem like a cash grab product. Everybody seems to be shoving them out. While Bluetooth is convenient, it's a lossy, degraded signal. It's patently obvious that nobody's going to break new ground when it comes to Bluetooth transmission. The Nico Cake doesn't dramatically change the landscape. It doesn't do everything different from its competitors. This product has limited Bluetooth support. You're stuck with SBC or AAC. It's got the same Bluetooth limitations as the others. You've got the dropout and range issues, for example. Its app is usable, but nothing exceptional. The noise cancellation function technically works. The DSP is a nice addition, but you will either like or hate those presets. You don't have an option to create your own settings. At the beginning of this video, I said that Moondrop packed a lot of technology into a sub $50 product. I still think that's true, but the actual implementation of that technology is not the best. As you might have noticed throughout this video, the Nico Cake's advertised features aren't as spectacular as one might have hoped. The ability to change touch control functions is not what the marketing suggests. You get very, very limited control over that. The DSP might or might not work for you. A dedicated EQ band in the app would have been a better decision, I think. The noise cancellation is not close to class leading. It works. Barely. The build is fine, but even Moondrop says to be careful with this product. They clearly tell us not to open and close the charging case too often. 
all of this brings us to value. Despite the shortcomings of the Nico Cake, yes, I think it is value. At around $40, it does provide decent build, various tuning options, some kind of ANC, and agreeable design and comfort. This earbud is nothing hype-worthy. If the ANC were more powerful, or if the app were more useful, or if the build were a little better, I think we could have a more resounding recommendation. But we don't live in a world of what-ifs. Moondrop apparently had to make some decisions to keep the price down. Some of those decisions will directly impact whether you are enticed to buy this product. In my opinion, the Nico Cake does enough to justify its price. You might not like the sound signature, but that's true for any audiophile product. But what you cannot deny is that Moondrop at least tried to give us something different for an affordable price. And that is refreshing.